Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome here. This April 14th, middle of April. Boy, time is flying, but it is gorgeous outside. The trees and the flowers are simply beautiful. So I want to tell you, Friday night we went to the performance at Glen High School. Nope, not Glen High School. Oak Grove High School, where my grandson goes to high school. And they put on the musical, and he did the sound, um, which is probably sound and lights and all of that. Um, but it was a, a great play. We went to see him. So proud of him. Let me see if I can. He, he would just, of course, love that I'm doing this. But here he is. So excited about that. So applause to my grandson. He's in marching band and he does theater, sometimes acting, but he loves doing the sound and all of that. So it was, it was very nice. Very, very nice. Okay. Let's see who's here. And then I've got some... I, my kids always know, be careful what you tell mom, because she gets so excited at Christmas. She, it's going to be hard for her to keep the presents a secret. Well, I feel like that with y'all right now, because I think I found the pattern for our July class. And thank you to Joni, I think it was, who gave me suggest her suggestions of things she hasn't learned yet because besides just having fun sewing I like teaching especially if it is a technique that you don't have a lot of practice with so that will be coming up in a few minutes because I'm so excited I've already been looking for fabric so I'm very very excited it is a free class that I taught last July we do it something like the second week of July, after the 4th of July. We do it when it's too hot to be outside and when we're stuck at home and need something new and exciting to do. So we're going to, oh, that's a good idea, Miss Marsha, darling. And in fact, I've got something coming in the mail from Miss Marsha, a little thank you note. But I was going to tell you that... Um, it's a free class I do. We do it on a Zoom type format in Jitsi. And we it's Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday for um, about four hours each day. But if you are a member of our groups IO, then I will um, we will record the actual classes. And I'll give you, if you're a member of the groups IO, I'll give you a secret, um, not secret code, but I'll give you the private code to those videos. That way, if you're busy, if you're on vacation, you work during the day, whatever, you still get to participate. So it's a lot of fun. We spend good hours together every day. We do the quilt together. So it's it just a lot of fun. It's like a virtual class. You get to stay at home in your own sewing area. And it's just a lot of fun. And you can bring chocolate. So that's a, always a good thing. All right. Let's see who is here. Hello, everybody. I noticed when I started the computer up, Sonia was the very first person here. Hello, Sonia, sweetheart. You're such a dear, and I'm so glad we, we corrected a little um, mishap when my email did not go through to her. But what a sweetheart. You, you are just way too good to me, Miss Sonia. So Joe So is here. Marsha, the best hostess in the world is here. Michelle the quilter. Hello, Miss Polly. Hi, hon. And uh, <laughs> Regal Rose and Quilt Squirrel, otherwise known as Jody. And she's here. 
And Crafty Pat. Hello, Pat Hun. Oh, I'm so glad it's sunny and 80 degrees. It's supposed to get that warm here. Yikes. I'm not ready yet. In fact, I got my seeds in from Lowe's this time. I just, I've been too busy. So I ordered uh, just a few vegetable seeds from Lowe's. Great price, great service. I also do something. I don't know if you have tried it, but I buy these polymer granules that absorb water. So especially, I do mostly container gardening now. Those pots, especially in the sun, can dry out so fast. So one time I tried taking cheap diapers and pulling out the gel inside. But then I realized, you know what? They might have like antibacterial properties in those diapers to keep this, you know, the odor down. So I thought, let's go ahead and buy the real thing, you know. <laughs> but I've been doing the, the gels in the containers for years. <laughs> Pardon me for the hiccup. And uh, I sit here all quiet. And then when I start talking, and I talk excitedly, I swallow a lot of air. So then I get hiccups. But but I've got these gel. And you can buy them. They're polymer granules. You can buy them in the garden supply. And one bag lasts forever. But if you are a container gardener like me, or let's say there's, I'm going to plant some astilbe out in the front yard because it's a perennial for shade, which I have a lot of. And where I want them planted is not the most loamy soil and it's not the soil dries out pretty good there. And I'm not, I don't go, I water my containers, but I don't water the yard anymore. It's like, Good luck, grass. Good luck, you know, unless something's really in distress, I try not to water it because I don't want to waste the water. So I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and we were always short on water. So it's kind of imprinted me. In fact, when I first went out to spend time with Mark in Dallas, Texas, I was shocked. This was 20 years ago, so I'm sure it's not that way now. But the amount of watering they did, where the sprinklers were just spraying in the road, it killed me. I was like, everybody leaves all their lights on out here and everybody just waters indiscriminately. Oh, and he was like, oh, no, I, I think I'm dating a tree hugger. It's like, yeah, but, you know, it, it once if you're raised worrying about resources, then that sticks with you. But anyway, make a long story short, I got some granules. If you haven't tried them and your containers, your pots that your flowers are planted in dry out too quick, consider those. They're great. And every year I refresh, put in at least new, half new soil in all my containers. And so that's why I need to add. But I tell you what, a teaspoon of them is enough. When I first started using them, I put in a little too much when it would rain, the plants would kind of cock out of the pot. You'd go to look and there was this big clump of those granules. <laughs> because have you ever seen the water beads that start out little tiny things and they expand? That's the same thing, the same idea. So anyway, I think that's funny, but I always like to pass on any little good tips that I have found over time, because honestly, I like planting these things, but I don't like having to maintain them when it's 90 degrees, some degrees outside. So whatever I can do early on and keep everything going, then I'm happy. Oh, and Bonnie, Bonnie has, has, she is our black work um, embroidery queen and Polly finished hers today. So I'll be showing you that picture. Now, when we say black work and red work, if you're not familiar with it, you can use whatever color floss you want. That was the term because back when it originated and black work goes back to 1500s in England long way. And, um, but the reason it got that name is because that was the color thread. 
that they had most prevalently. Just like when you hear red work, because when it came about in the third quarter of the 19th century, that was the new fad color because they finally had a source of dye that made it inexpensive enough for the average person to try it, if you could find the time. <laughs> That's always been a problem. And, you know, nowadays when I watch shows like 1900 House and I look how they were so busy from the 530 in the morning until they fell in bed when it was too dark to do anything else. They didn't have a lot of time. So the average person didn't do a lot of embroidery and needle crafts. We're so lucky now. We have in so many ways, especially once we retire, we have so many hours in the day that we can do things like that. So we're very fortunate. I don't want to go back in time, not one bit. <laughs> I'm happy to be here and have air conditioning. <laughs> so let me come back up and see who is here. We were talking to Pat. Talking about the weather where Jody is. It's really bright. And uh, Charlene Lawson is here. It's really bright outside today and getting warm. I'm hoping the temperature will dip back down a bit. Oh, and remind me, I have some pictures. From Thursday night when we were here doing Art Quilt Thursday, I told y'all that there was a big cell, storm cell over us. Two counties away to the west, they had an F1 tornado hit. And I have some pictures of that. So we only, my lights blinked on and off, on and off. But luckily, we were okay. Mark and I, we, we were sitting there and we swore we heard a tree fall. But we haven't gone out to investigate. So hopefully, it's not on our property. We did look out there, but... You know, somewhere around here, we heard a tree fall. But I have some pictures to show you that. And, um, but we got lucky. We got lucky. All right. Now, let me see. Let me come back down here. Oh, oh my. Seven, 37 green giant arborvitae. Oh, wow. That, that, I assume you're planting them for... Uh, privacy or screening, but they should be really pretty. Okay. This is great to see all of you. Betty Meisner is here. Hello, hon. Yeah, it is. It's easier and that's what it's known by. So that is exactly right. So it's so, it is so good to see all of you. And, um, I'd like to think that I got all kinds of things done this week to share with you, but I have to be honest, I was doing my taxes and I hate doing them and I did all the work. This is the first year ever that I have not qualified to do itemized deductions. The standard deduction was 2000 more than my itemizations. I said, I wish I had known that because 80% of the work I do is gathering up all of the information for my itemized deductions. So, <laughs> yes, tax day is tomorrow. And luckily, I did them. Electronically, I've even paid, as painful as that was, to pay over a thousand dollars in taxes. They're done, and uh, whew, wee, that's why I dread it. And, and so, when we picked a date to actually electronically pay taxes, I said April fifteenth, and if I could specify eleven fifty nine p.m., I would. <laughs> Mark's like, yes, pay. I said, nope. Not one minute earlier. So next year, we will be Mr. and Mrs. for real, legally. And so guess what? No longer does he just get to do the short form and I do all. No, 
We're doing them together. <laughs> and he said, but what if it's cheaper to do them married but separate? I said, we can do it that way if we have to. But uh, every year, you know, he takes one hour and says, oh, I'm done with my taxes. And, oh, it takes me days. <laughs> Now, I tend to, I find the questions they ask are so ambiguous that that is the tough part. But this time I tried to take better notes of exactly how I did it. So I'll remember. One of the things is I get an annuity for retirement. And um, since my first husband was a very bad boy, um, I got half of his civil service retirement, but there's a certain formula to do it, how much was put in, and are you a joint annuitant, and all of that. So it makes it a little tricky, but you know how cheap I am, so it's worth every moment. <laughs> but anyway, so um, that got done 7.15 last night. So I said, Mark, I was early this year. <laughs> so anyway, so I have to be honest between going to the play and between um, I had a dentist appointment this week, did good. And I told the, the dentist, I see, I'd rather come to the dentist and do my taxes. <laughs> she goes, oh, thank you. <laughs> So anyway, I don't think that's saying much. But anyway, so it was kind of a busy week. I haven't gotten a lot done. Now, of course, I got something done because what is easier than when you sit down in the evening than to work on an English paper piecing? I've got to be honest. I am in love with it. And even though I have sworn for 30 years that I would never do hexes, I do know there's a hexy in my future. And it pains me because every other thing I swore I would never do, I now enjoy doing. So maybe the problem is not in changing your mind. It's ever drawing the line in the sand in the first place. So maybe that's it. From now on in my life, it's all good. <laughs> so anyway, I just looked down and saw this. I found this on Amazon. You got two for $7.99. This is for when you do um, chain piecing. You know, where you sew in one thing after another, after another, which I do a lot. It may, it's so much more, it's easier on my brain because if I need a certain number of half square triangles, I do them all at once. This is wonderful. I had one that I mounted. I bought the little thing before and I mounted it on a piece of wood, put my name on it. So when I go to retreat, it's there. But you have to make sure the thread goes right in there. You don't want to jab your hand on a seam ripper. So this was good for when I first got it. But this is better because all you have to do is just aim in this general area. And there's a rotary cutter blade in there. So not only do you have five openings, but then take a screwdriver, loosen it up, adjust the blade a fraction of an inch. You've got all new five cutting book surfaces. I love the stable piece of wood, nice heavy piece of wood it's on. And it's got little sticky feet. So it will stay where you put it. So I just thought I'd show you that again. But two of them for $7.99, that's what, $4 a piece? That's my kind of deal. All right, now I can have one upstairs, one down here. All right, so I didn't even look at my red work. I apologize. I need to catch up now. This is two weeks. I haven't done anything. But I did work on block number eight of my English paper piecing. And I've got to be honest, I love it. And you know what makes me excited? 
as I continue to age past 29, uh, as I continue to age, I will spend probably less and less time at my sewing machine. This is something I can do from the comfort of my recliner with my feet up, with Netflix binge watching. I mean, what? it's so good. When I went to do my grandson's musical the other night, um, Mark and I got there early and I sat and worked on this until it was time for the play. So I could take everything I needed to do this in a Ziploc baggie. So, because even this, you know, you just fold it up and off you go. So I am crazy nutty about this. This one needs these this funny little shape put all the way around and in here. And then the final thing, there'll be a corner triangle here that will turn it into a square. So this was an absolute joy to do. Let me see if I can show you these stitches. I'm getting into a routine, so I do it without thinking. Let me see if I can show you. These stitches are the tiniest things I ever, I, I, I didn't know I could do stitches this tiny. Do you see those tiny stitches? I mean, look at that one even. But it just feels comfortable to do it. And understand, I have big hands. <laughs> and a, I am able to do this beautifully. And no stitches show through the front. Just a little hint of where I pulled them. But no actual threads. I love, I'm loving this. I'm loving it. So I've got all those blocks done. This one will pro probably be finished tonight. I'm having a great time. Oh, I do want to say something. I'm going to have to go through this house and try to find the needle that used to be on this thread. When I picked it up, I didn't make sure that the needle was firmly in this piece. And all of a sudden, I looked at the clock and went, oh, no, I've got to run down to get ready for the show. And now all I have is a thread. So be careful, please. And um, make sure that needle is secure. It's not something you want to find with bare feet. And I'm a barefooter. Mark goes around in socks. The only needle we've ever been stuck with, he got stuck. And he does not like that. So be careful. How do I sew them together? Okay. That's a good question. Thank you for asking that. Because I'm always happy for you to know. I'm going to use a big needle so you can see it. All right. Did I have my did I have my speaker on? I don't know. Oh, okay. Here we go. Whoops. Where is it going? All right. All of a sudden I thought, I don't remember if I turned my speaker on, but hopefully, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not fun when your foot finds it. All right, so I'm going to thread this needle. Oh, good job, but I got a needle that was bigger. Here, I've only partially sewn this seam, so I'll show you. It's as easy as you'd ever want. What I try to do is have these edges slightly offset. Some people put them right even, and they're able to do this right here. But that's a little hard on my arthritis. So what I do is I push this one up just a touch. That way I can come into this green side of the fabric and eat more easily go right to the yellow side of the fabric. 
And I make sure to pick up at least two or three stitches because I want this to be secure. And then simply, it's just a whip stitch that catches both stitches. And and reason I put them offset too is that way I'm pointed up. I'm avoiding the paper pattern because I love this so much. I plan on keeping the paper patterns to use over and over until they finally wear out. But it's just a simple little whip stitch. And I end up, for whatever reason, I've gotten into a habit of just putting them in pretty close together. Now, don't bring this extra behind piece, don't bring it up too far. If you bring it up too far, you're liable to stitch down too low, and then your stitches would show from the front. So I just slide it up just a touch. So I can, it just, it just makes it so easy to do that little whip stitch. And I pull it all the way through every time. Some people might want, be good at taking several stitches and then pulling it through. But I have enough problem with knots. It amazes me that just having this tail can form a knot while it's going through the stitches. So hold on. Let me, sometimes I will find out what, where exactly this is caught on and I'll just cut it loose. And if I accidentally cut it wrong, I might be starting a new one. Oh, guess what? I just did. So, but anyway, you just pretend to keep going, doing those little stitches, whipping them. And also use some kind of thread conditioner or beeswax. I noticed one woman, let me pretend that I'm down at the end of this. She came through like this. She takes her two threads, okay? The one thread she wound around the needle like that. When she goes to knot off, she wound that around. The other one, she... Okay, she wound, and the other one, she went the opposite way. So one, she went one way, one, she went the other way, and then pulled her thread through, and that knotted it. But whatever way you want to make a nice and good knot. When you start off with your stitches, I try to bury the knot under the little flap of fabric reason I do that is I don't want the knot right here on the edge where if it gets stressed, it's tempted to sneak out. So I might put the, put the thread and the knot, the first knot through this before I actually get to the stitches. And then once you have finished sewing the piece on, you just pull it out. I take and just bend it back the other way. And then it, it's just so well behaved. So that is how I do the stitching. And the thing I like about it, I have to look up and down a lot. But um, it's not a complicated stitch. So you can, you can watch TV and do it. But I still have to kind of, because when I go to put the needle in, I always... I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to my stitches. It's so funny. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to stitching on the machine. But by hand, I become very competitive. I want my stitches as perfect as I can get them. Sorry about that. All right. So let me grab this agenda. So I told you about the English paper piecing spring red work. Um, up here on the design wall, whoops, I have, whoops, I have my house landscape that I'm hoping maybe this week to get it quilted. And then Thursday night, I finished, hold on one second. I can't wait to show you. 
the quilt for the class. Cannot wait to show you. Okay, so this was the final week art on Thursday, our art quilt Thursday for the watercolor quilt. And I'm I'm liking it now. It's so funny. I do this almost every almost every single uh, quilt that I work on. I get a phase where I think, oh, this is not my best work. I'm not happy with this. And then this is how I knew I was an art quilter. I start embellishing it, and then I fall in love with it. So anyway, now I'm enjoying it. I got my little bird down here. And in fact, there is a Phoebe that is sitting on a nest on my front porch. So now I have to be careful because they, she's real skittish. It must be her first year sitting on a nest. But anyway, but I enjoy it and I, I still need to put the binding on, get that sewn on, and I'll show you. When I'm done, I'll show you. Now it's my thing to make sure to finish all these quilts. Not only try to get my UFOs done, unfinished objects, but to also, but to also anything new I start, get it, touch it once, mess with it once, so get it completely done. All right, so I showed you that. Now, today, I'm going to show you a little bit about the class, the information from the class I took with Sheila Christensen, and so I'll pull this a little closer so I have that ready to show you. And then the other thing that we're going to do is I had hoped to have the flower pattern completely done, but taxes kept me busy. Um, also, now that my taxes are done, I will be starting the organization for this quilt. I've got my three boxes and my garbage box. You can make a fort line. Hmm, I'm now curious. But I've got the the throwaway box is much bigger than the others to incentivize me to clean the junk out of here. And every marker, pen, everything's going to be tested and it's going to go in the trash if it doesn't work. And this excess of rulers, they're going to be thrown away pick the one I want to use and throw it, but I'm going to do that with, I'm just going to go through kind of ruthlessly and start to organize. So I will be starting on that. I got off from last week's show and told Mark ab about how cathartic it was to finally have a plan made to get this room in order. And I said, I just know it's going to feel so much better when I do. And he said, you know, that's funny. He said, but you tend to do that. You tend to, the room becomes a mess. And then you organize it. And then you make an amazing quilt afterwards. And I thought that was really nice. And it was nice too. It helped me remember. Yeah, I do go through this. And yes, getting the room organized really helps me be creative again. So that is wonderful. Well, I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to show you about this flower quilt. I have been watching Melinda Beulah and just loving what she's making. So, um, it, I don't know. I was, you know, when you watch YouTube channel and you happen to go, oh, I'll look at this. Then it'll, it'll refresh with a bunch of things that are in the similar vein. And that's how I found her. I didn't really know of her. And so now I have been watching her videos. So let me show you what I've got right now. When we do when we do the show and tell, I will show you my inspiration photos. Now, if you want, you can buy patterns and kits from Melinda Beulah. B-U-L-A. Okay. Now, what I did with this, do I have a copy of the original? Well, this is an inked up original. I was first looking 
I was first looking for water lilies, and I still want to do these. But my new my newer laptop doesn't have the Word program that allows me to posterize. I'm ill about it. So I put this aside for right now because then I saw a dahlia flower. Dahlia flowers are perfect for this. And let me tell you why. I want to have a flower pattern that's a little more in, um, intricate, okay? Now, there's all different kinds. You could have a rose. A rose is not going to have as many petals so that you could show all of these different. And I just, this is the look that I wanted to do right now. But I love the number of petals. Now, you could do a zinnia, but be careful because Zinnias can have a lot of little tiny curled petals, which are hard to represent. But I got excited about this. This to me is really, really pretty. And so what I, whoops, turn that back off. So I found this picture. And what I did is I took it into Word and I started working with it. I, um, I removed the background from around it, and then I enlarged it some, and then I amped up the contrast. I um, actually, I did intensify some of the color, the saturation, because this is going to be the one to show me what colors and how many of them to pick out. I wanted to be able to see the couple um, highlight areas as well as the depth of the shadow areas and I wanted to make sure to know where to add the little touches of yellow so then what I did is I actually sharpened this even more because I love how it makes each of those petals just pop so this is going to be what I look at when I pick my colors, and I know that these are a little too dark. I'll, I might lighten them a little, but it helps me to know um, this is going to help me in picking out those colors. Let me see. Oh, yeah. There we go. I had to turn off that light. But this is what I, this is what I ended up with. And this is slightly exaggerated, but it's going to help me to get a dynamic flower. All right, then after I did that, I turned it on grayscale. And one of the problems with putting it on grayscale was I didn't want to use a lot of ink, so I faded it out. That was a mistake because then I got my light board. I started to lay a piece of paper on it, and it's not showing through, not nearly good enough. So then what I did is I said, okay, I tried putting this paper on. Let me turn the light board on now. And come on. Now that I don't want it to come on, I mean, when I didn't want it to come on, it kept coming on. Now it's just going to sit there. It said, well, you bossed me around too much. Okay, here we go. So I had put this on and realized I'm having a hard time seeing half of the valuations. So I took that off. I came in here with a marker. And then I said, okay, let me go back to the beginning. Let me see. Oh, this plug. I think the plug was loose. Come on. Okay. Okay. So then I came in here with the marker. First, I used the pencil to make sure I had it in the right place. First, I used the pencil. Then I came in with the marker because at least this way I can see a, a little bit more of the areas of definition. And this won't be all. I will then, after I've got this part, then I'll bring this back over and say, huh, okay, I'm seeing this petal and, and then I can even 
differentiate even smaller amounts because I want this to be a little more complicated than I'm used to. And what I'm going to do then is then give everything a number, which is going to be the intensity. And I'll pick whether zero is going to be dark or light, six will be dark or light. And But then I will differentiate. I'm going to make this into a pattern. And then when I have the pattern ready, I'll let you know. And I will be happy to send you a free email copy of the pattern. What I did to enlarge this, since I couldn't figure out how to do any posterization, is I took and cropped this picture. I enlarged it as big as I could get it on one page. And then I took and cropped it so that I was just doing this upper left quadrant, then the upper right quadrant, then the lower left, then the lower right. And I enlarged those as big as I could get them on one sheet. Now this, if you look, this is the upper right, right there. This is the upper left. And what I will do is find where they overlap, like right there. Then I can tape them together. And I'll cut out the background so it's not too confusing. And then here is the lower left. And that will kind of overlap there. And here is. This looks like kind of a middle right. And here, here this is to also help me see how to place it. And then I think this, let me see. Now maybe this is up here. Okay. I'll have to figure this out, but you can see what I'm saying. Once I will take and, and be very careful and line it up, trim any excess, tape it together. So I've got the whole picture, but that's how I did it. So I didn't have to take it to a copy store and get them to help me. Oh, in fact, I forgot. Here's one of the pages right there. That's probably the lower right. Let me see. Yes, I can tell by right here. This is the lower right piece. So it's kind of like doing a little bit of a puzzle. This also helps me to see exactly where. Now, am I going to use a tiny little line of color? No. Any little lines like striations like that, that will be done with thread sketching. Hi, Lisa. No problem, Miss Lisa. I was telling them I don't have as much done because I unfortunately was doing taxes last night. But yeah, see, I can look here. Oh, yeah, lower right. That's just what this, I was looking I'm pretty sure that's the lower right. So I've got, you know, it's going to be like, hmm, how can I work this out? So I have to finish making the pattern first. Then I will come and look through my fabrics and find the right mix. I mostly will probably go through the pinks, reds, and maybe a little... um. Not exactly purple, but a heavy burgundy. I got, I've got. i got to look through my pinks and reds. So I'm going to make sure I take this upstairs with me so I can have this pat, uh, pattern made by next Sunday. And if I get it done earlier in the week, I'll put it on our group's I.O. And that way you can get it and be ready to work with us on this. All right, let me put it in my basket while I'm thinking about it. All right. Now, let's bring in, let's bring in this class I took from Sheila Christensen. And last week, I put an address up of her channel. She's from New Zealand. I'll do the same thing if I can in just a minute, 
I wish I had saved it, but I don't think I did. But here is, if you have a paper and pen, this is her name, Sheila Christensen. And if you look up Sheila Christensen Quilter on Google, it will pop her information up. Then you can go to her website. And she will do, she will have virtual classes and patterns. In fact, I found a pattern on her website that I have been wanting to do for a couple of years since I first saw it. Okay. Now, what she does is she takes geometric shapes. She takes a triangle ruler to help her fussy cut fabrics in geometric shape. The reason I got excited about that is because of my new love of English paper piecing. Taking her class will also help me do fuss, fussy cutting of fabric for English paper piecing. So I just wanted to show you what this looks like. This was a class offered by Mancuso Virtual Schoolhouse. Mancuso, they do the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show. They do a quilt show in Lancaster, Pacific. I mean, they do a lot of quilt shows. And I love their quilt shows. And um, so you get, once you've paid for your class, gets close to to time for the class, she will send you an instruction sheet like this, tell you exactly what you need. Then she gives you, um, and different teachers, here we go. Here is www.quiltswithsheila.com. So that's her website, www.quiltswith, or quilta. Not plural. Quiltwithsheila.com. All right. So, so she wants you to learn how to fussy cut pattern repeats with a triangle ruler. And then there's a list of things you need. And she wanted you to check your ruler. Is it a blunt tip ruler, a ruler with the point off, or with the point on? Because that just changes things just a little touch you can see where with the blunt that's the end right there so right here is the whole first inch with a pointed ruler that is extra the one inch starts below that top point so that's why she wanted to see did you have a point one or a blunt point tip or blunt tip and then she gives you this information and tells you how to cut these strips so that you can fussy cut them and get a really wonderful kaleidoscope type effect. And how many of each shape you need to have. And she deals with triangle, diamond, and a hexagon. Now, then she tells you, she shows you a couple different blocks and how you can make them. And I have them here. That's, let me find them because I did them for the class. Now, where did I put them? That's always the tricky part, but I'm sure I have just seen it. Let me check all the on. There they are. I knew I had them. I hadn't gotten them out of the basket yet. All right. So. Let me show you. This is where. This is the hexagon shape. This is a small triangle. A little bit bigger one. A little bit bigger ones. So, and then here, and I cut out a whole bunch. Here's the hexagon shape. Here are the diamond shapes. And here is put together with just the diamond and triangle. So this one's a little bit more complicated. Small triangle, bigger one than these triangles. And then this is a hexagon shape. But together, these make a diamond. So you... That's why you use that ruler so that everything ends up fitting, okay? 
All right. So there's a two inch triangle and then large ones are three and a half inches. All right. Then she gave us these patterns. And out of these, you can make your templates. So here's your template. The dotted line is always the sewing line. This is the cutting fabric line. So that way you've got a built-in seam allowance. Quilts with, quilt with, not quilts, quilt with Sheila. Quilt with Sheila.com. And I think they did spell out the width. And this is all copyrighted. So now what she's going to do, so she's shown you the shapes you're going to work with. And they all can be achieved with your ruler. Because to make a hexagon, let me grab a piece of paper here. To make a hexagon, what you can do is you can, let me see, mark this down. How did she do this? Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me grab the paperwork again. She showed us how to do this. I was afraid I might forget. Okay. You just, it's, that's right. You, you end up cutting off the tip. So let's say you make, let me just draw this real quick. So what you end up doing, and she gave us the specific information for this. But what you you use the ruler, but depending on how big you want this to be. Now let me come back here. This is going to make a bigger one than she had us do. But now you come in here. All right. So you measure. She told you that you measure each side. You know how many inches. To make each size, you can use this to make a hexagon. So then after this, so she was telling us she has the measurements. This is a three and a half inch triangle showing the seam lines. But what she did then is she had us, she had us make these windows. Okay. Make these windows. And what you do with these windows, and she even had it to where you could fold the paper, fold the paper up like, I don't know, three inches, lay the ruler on here. And she told us between what line and what line, draw it. And on that way, when you end it up, let's say drawing the lines this way and here, then when you cut it out, it makes a hexagon. So you do it on the fold. So she tried to make it things as easy for us as she could. Because then we made these cute little windows. And this is the whole purpose. How can you fussy cut, do something very different with your quilt? And by using these windows, this is where this, this is going to be right here is going to be the actual sewing line. So I, that way you can know just what you want to put in the center. Let me see. You can, you can decide what you want to put in the center of that window. Then when you like what you've chosen, Let's see. Oh, look at these. These are so cute. Okay. Mm, they, oh, this is it. Okay. So that, I want this in the center of this window. Then you come in with your chalk. You draw around it. And this is what I'm going to do for English paper piecing. Then you know to cut around here. And then this, once you've sewn it, this is going to be what shows in your small triangle. That's exactly it, Bonnie. Uh, hi, Sheila. Nice to see me, Cheryl. Nice to see you, sweetie. Oh, I'm glad you had company. But, like, look at this. And it's just so nice to know. 
Now, let's say you want to make a big diamond. So you fit this in, that fits your window, and then you just put the chalk around it. You know exactly where to cut it. Now, I took my cardstock and made the, the frames out of it. And he, as you can see, you can make it. This is a 60 degree ruler. But do you see how you end up making it? It's you say, okay, I'm going to cut the tip off. I don't need the tip. And I'm going to come down on this ruler to the three and three quarter inch. Whoops. The three and three quarter inch dotted line. And once you do that, you don't worry about the tip. You come down and put the three and three quarter inch line right at that point. You draw on the paper and then you will end up, whoops, I had it crooked. I don't want you to see it crooked, but you draw like this, then you get a frame. And then for this, I'll show you. She told us, okay, put the fold of the paper. Whoops, let me come down a little bit more. This one I made wider because, let me, this one might be a little bit more accurate. But sometimes I cut the paper a little wide because it's only the inside that you really, that has to be perfect. But she said, okay, put your ruler at three and a half. The three and a half, whoops, no, three and a quarter. No, it was three and a half. Put your ruler at three and a half. Draw a line between three and a half and two. And then that way you can get your hexagon. It's something you kind of have to. I'm not good at explaining this kind of stuff because my brain doesn't work that way. But I, if you see what you have to do and how you can make these little picture frames. So now. What she wanted us to do was to find six repeats on the fabric. That can be a little bit trickier because you have to really look at the fabric. And some of it's harder to see than others. But pick like this. Pick this one. Now, they have to be exactly the same. Oh, this one is a wee bit confusing. This is a little confusing to find the repeat. Okay, here we go. It's not as easy as you think. Here is this flower. Here is the repeat. So how much fabric would you need? Here we go again and here we go again. So what you end up doing, let's do a hexi. We'll put the hexi right here on this. So you center this the best way you want to do. Center this the very best way you want to do. Then you draw your chalk around like this. Okay. Get your all the way around. Now, what I do, sometimes I like to use the plastic template and take and draw a certain shape on the plastic template so clear plastic so when you move it you can see but you can do something similar on this you can do yellow put a line like this then put this line here like that and put blue okay then come over here and put turquoise You could even do that here, but put these lines that help you know where to line this up, okay? And then yellow again here. So now when it comes time to move it to the next repeat, you have got some lines here we go. Got to mark, put it back up here where these lines right there match with that yellow flower, where these lines match with the blue. These match with the turquoise. Let me get this adjusted just a little. Hold on. 
Yeah, and then put this here so it matches up with that turquoise. This matches up with the blue. These match up with the yellows. Here, more turquoise. Okay, so it's kind of tricky. I think Jenny Byer's method of using a piece of see-through plastic that you could actually draw this pattern on makes it a little easier. But that's what you, that's why you want to use these. And it can be tricky. You can look at a fabric like this and say, oh, well, I'm, I can find six repeats of this so easily. Not necessarily. All right. Let me lay this out here. You have to look for some fabrics will repeat at diagonals. Some do just in straight lines. But let's look at this flower. It's got a red rose, a burgundy rose off this way, and a yellow open flower this way. Nope. Here. Does that? Yeah. This here, you've you got to repeat. And they're not quite in line. But I'm looking to make sure everything is exactly the same. Yes. So now let me get the triangle ruler. But you just have to pick one that you can start with. And this, maybe I'll put this one this way. So then I would make little notations on the side where it touches what. And I could go from that one to then this one. But it's tricky. Some fabrics are really good with repeats. Some of them you have to buy yards and yards because it's hard. Hard. I mean, you can see that flower a lot of different places, but it's not with that burgundy rose and the orange. That's what makes it tricky. So when you find a fabric you like and you want to do something like this, double check to see where the repeats are. All righty. And then once, what I loved about how she did it was making a notation on this, whether you do with it with a clear plastic, template plastic, or whether you put notations on this little edge. I one time took a class with, to make kaleidoscope, and they had us cut a round, good-sized piece around the image, cut six or eight of them. Then you had to lay them on top of each other, right sides facing up, and then you had to take a bunch of pins and put a pin through every exact piece. You know, like if this was a big piece you cut out and you would have to go, okay, I'm going to put a pin right through this point right here, right there. And then you'd have to line up the next one exactly there. And you'd have to put like four at least reference points that you'd have to pen exactly. That made me a nervous wreck. I like her way of you just take your frames and whether it's a solid clear template or this frame, you mark it. You Then you just take chalk, go around the piece, then go find another one. I love this. So by doing that, then I was able to get these pieces cut. These are the same wedges, just like this, okay? The same wedges, and then sew them together, and then I had this fabric. I cut it from the triangle pattern, and when you put them together, matching up your seams, you can get some really great secondary um, designs. And I love connecting this circle here. And then these, I cut out two large triangles, one small blue one, one, I guess, mm, one was the larger. I, now I am kind of forgetting it. But here was this piece. And what I did is when it came time to sew it, I just made sure to sew over the white part because this was the part I wanted to focus. So every time I sew again, yeah, see where the seam allowance hits? It'll cut off that white part. 
But so it was just a way to fussy cut. I wanted to make sure I took this class because now, now I know why you can buy patterns for English paper piecing. And they'll have a triangle, and inside they'll have an inner part that you take out that makes it a frame. And that way, what my goal is, is to do some amazing fussy cutting of my little pieces of English paper piecing so I can make all new designs. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to be so much fun. All right. Well, I just wanted to show you this. Huh. It's so funny. After I finish taking the class, I usually kind of, my brain goes, okay, we're moving on to something else now. And it's like, what was it that I learned again? But just when I sit down and actually do it, it'll come back to me. All righty. Well, almost time to do show and tell. But I can't wait any longer. Not one bit longer to show you what I'm thinking about for our July class. And I know it's only April, but July will be here before we know it. And so what I've been doing this week is going through sites, looking for quilt patterns. And to do a class with you, I like, to be, I like for it to be, number one, a free pattern. Number two, hopefully something that if you don't want to buy more fabric, you can do from your stash. And now that's not always possible because sometimes you need enough of a background or enough of a border print or whatever. So I've been every evening looking through, looking through. I've got a whole folder. I'll show you it, show and tell. Whole folder of, hmm, what are we going to do for our summer class? So, and I also like to give you time so that if you want to buy fabric, you can work it into your budget. But I went past, I think it was an email advertisement for, um, Keepsake Fabrics. Keepsake, the sister company to Pineapple Fabric. And this quilt picture popped up and my eyes like the cartoon went boing. <laughs> so are you ready? Here is the one. If you hate it, you can tell me. But here is the pattern that got my attention. All right. This is called glaze. And actually... The fabric, because see what happens is this is by Andover Fabrics. They're an English company, beautiful fabrics. The, they, the designer of the pattern and the fabrics was Libs Elliot, Elizabeth Elliot, Libs Elliot. And what they do is she designs a fabric and then the company prints it and they want patterns that they can put out to get your attention to want you to buy that fabric. So that's how we can get all of these free um, patterns that we see. So guess what? This is a free pattern download from Andover Fabrics. And you, you can go and find that. If you go to Andover Look for their free pattern button. Here it is. Now, I love this. This got me excited. It's a fabric that looks a lot like a grunge fabric, but then it has like striations in it. And this is Libs Elliot named this the wildflower quilt because I think to her it looked like a wildflower field. And um, so I've already, in fact, I accidentally printed two different uh, patterns. But here are the fabrics that she showcased in this. This is a paper piece pattern, which means 
Very easy, simple, straightforward. This is also a great reason to have a, a thread cutter that's really good for um, assembly line quilting. Because what you end up doing, it and it tells you how much of what color fabric, everything. It even shows you how you can cut your fabrics to make good use of them. But what you're going to have to do is print out, print out, I think it was like a hundred and some pages that look like this. Okay. This is your paper piece. And I'll be glad to teach you the tips and tricks to easy paper piecing. I will probably be printing mine out on what's called newsprint. It's called newsprint. It's kind of like an, a natural muslin of paper. Okay. And newsprint just means, especially this doesn't have that many seams going across it. Newsprint's so much easier to take out. So I'm going to print. And it, it tells you exactly how many. Oh, 144. Now, if you don't want to make it as big, you can do that. If you wanted to make each block smaller so that it's a smaller quilt, we can do that too. I can easily resize this for you. But I I looked at this and, and I do this every time. I think, Deb, that's a lot of repeating, but it's so pretty. And when you look at it from a distance, it makes like a giant flower. So I might even for myself, this, this one works out to be 84 by 84. I would want to put a border. So we're talking by the time it's all said and done, probably 96 by 96. That's huge. So maybe what I'll do is shrink that paper piece pattern by half, and that will bring it down to a more manageable size. So what do you think? Is this something that you think you might want to do? And I will have it at half size and at full size. I'll offer you either one. And this year, because I've got the wedding coming up, I'm not really in the market to buy a lot of expensive fabric. So I went to Marshall Dry Goods and I found a fabric that's very similar, very similar for $4.99 a yard. So that's also going to take over half the cost of the fabric off. So I'm going to buy all new fabric for this. The interesting thing about this pattern and what really makes it shimmer is, do you see one block? Those are two different background fabrics, the lighter one and then the darker one. You see that? And so that's two background fabrics and they're right here here and here and if you didn't want to use the gray for the background you could probably use a an off-white and a beige or whatever but one thing i'm i can't believe i'm going to say this but i'm going to say if you want me to work up a fabric kit for you i can do that because if I buy fabric by the bolt, I can get it even cheaper. So, but I would have to have your payment up front to make sure that I don't get stuck with a whole bunch of fabric. But this is something to think about. We're not going to be, oh, in fact, here we go. I wanted to show you this. So that is, and what I will also do for you, I will tell you, exactly how big to cut each fabric so that you know it will fit like it's supposed to. So you don't have to have a whole hunk of fabric trying to lay it on there. 
you will, before we take, before we start the class, you'll have these fabrics pre-cut out. You know, you have just what you need to go there. So it's going to be a lot of prep work, but I'm happy to do it if you want to try it. So what do you think? Is that something you might be interested in doing? And also, if I end up making, you don't, you can do it yourself. You can use your stash. You're not going to hurt my feelings at all. But it does require one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, 24 different fabrics. And that's where I started thinking, yeah, it might be better to do a kit because I could add up how much, like the backgrounds, I could buy bolts, save. You know, you can get a bolt of some of these fabrics for $2.95 a yard. So we can all look at it, see if Michelle, hi, darling. Oh, my God, our Michelle Lang is here. Oh, it's so, I was thinking about you. You won't believe this. I was thinking last night. I want to find out how Michelle's doing, but I don't want to keep bothering her because I know that she's got a lot going on. That is wonderful. But anyway, just consider if we did, if I did something like work out kits, then that would probably be the cheapest way if you wanted to buy your fabric. And, um, and I'll just have to do the figuring. So I would just need to know ahead of time. Oh, I'm so glad, Michelle, sweetheart. I loved getting um, Patrick's message last time. What a sweetie. But anyway, we have plenty of time to talk about this. I just like telling you easy. Uh, telling it. Yeah. It, well, I'm not going to cut your individual pieces, but. If, if you have to have a quarter yard of blue, I will cut a quarter yard of blue. Oh, oh, good. So that's for middle. It's going to be second week of July. I have to look at a calendar and see what day does July 4th fall on. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead right now. Let me bring up my calendar because I have no idea what it's going to look like. I tell you what, I'm just trying to get through to May 21st. That's my wedding date. And that's that's all I can practically think of right now. All right, let's see. In July, the 4th is on Thursday. So what we have to decide, would you like the class to be July 8th through 12th or 15th through 19th? You get to decide which of those weeks. So it'll be the second week of July or the third week. Some people might want to get a little further out past July 4th, but you can decide. And But it's just giving you a little notice because, you know, we'll need a little notice. So I guess it'll give us, what, three months? Yeah, three months to prepare. But anyway, well, and Polly, you know, it would be great. If I have to make kits, it'd be great to have a Polly help me. <laughs> Polly's like, oh, no, oh, no, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> but actually, it's just a matter of getting the fabric and knowing exactly what size of each color to cut. So, but I hope that's something you would like to do. And, uh, yeah, it's work, but you know what? It's so much fun when we do it. Last year... For our Bargello, it was a lot of fun. So, gosh, I can't believe how good it is to see Michelle. Oh, that's wonderful. You'd be happy to help? We could have fun. We'd have the table set up, you know, because all together I could have four tables and we just do an assembly line. So, but it just depends on people might want to use their stash. They might not want to spend money in July on fabric. But let me know, and then that way I can make sure I put an order in with Marshall um, Dry Goods. So, because that, you know, it's a lot of different fabrics. And by if we do make our own kits, we can just get the small size. That's why I'm saying it would save money because you can't always buy a quarter yard from a company. A lot of these companies deal in yards only. So we'll look at it and see. You tell me what we'll do and 
Polly and I will get together and have a cutting party and I'll treat her to lunch and all that good stuff and we'll have a cutting party. So, but that we still have, you know, a couple months to make that full decision. All right, it's time for show and tell. And I do have a couple new pictures. I've gone, I did take the time to go through and call out pictures. Because once you've seen a picture three or four times, I think, you know, let's make room for new ones. Let me get something to drink before I do all that talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. All right. Get this here. I finally told Mark. Mark, do you wonder why? My microphone is always turned cattywampus. And he goes, I was wondering. And so I finally told him, he goes, oh, okay, I get it. Oh, all right. Let's see. Okay. Come on. All right. I even put it in a different place. Right here, instead of having them all and having to go through, make sure I didn't miss one, I put them all in one place. Now, first thing I'm going to do, let me go back one space, please, because I want to go to this, this ideas for 2024, which is this. Oh, here, the flowers. Okay, here are all the different flowers I was looking at. Here was the original Dahlia photo that I used for the flower idea. And then here it is after I have done some editing. And evidently, it's a Bacardi Dahlia. Makes sense with those beautiful colors. All right. So that's where, and but you can see how many different flowers and things I pulled up for this. And when I do, when I do do the water lily, I took and cut and pasted different pictures to make a scene. So that's how I'm going to design it. All right. So now go back up from that and. Okay, English paper piecing. Oh, I've already started a fish quilt um, folder because this summer, one of the things I want us to work on is a fish quilt where we do all kinds of embellishing. And I'm going to pick Betty Meisner's brain to find out some really good ideas to make our fish as cute and colorful as I can. So that is on... I've already started my folder for that. Now, what else I'm looking? I'm looking at a folder for, oh, the summer quilt. Okay. I don't think I quite put it in here. Let me go back one. I think it's down. Where is it? Here it is. Summer project. Some of y'all probably saw that and were like, Deb, over there, over there. So let me show you some of the things that I looked at. I looked at a Lone Star because I could get that as a free quilt. Tumbling blocks. I thought, ah, oh, tumbling blocks at some point. I want to do tumbling blocks as an English paper piecing. Here is the one that I would love to do for summer. I might like it better if that pattern were cut down. So, because you need that many blocks and that many colors to get the effect. But if I cut it down, it would require a lot less fabric. So, let's see what we can do. All right. Now, then, oh, here was one I liked. This Twilight Path. This is a Deb Tucker. Okay, um, kite flight, uh, this I think was just how, yeah, here it is. 
So there was that one too that I thought was pretty. That would also though need a lot of fabrics. You know, it seems like the things I absolutely love are always a little bit complex. Here was tulip time I thought about, which is a Lone Star Plus applique. Um, Pinata, which was a Jenny Buyer. But the problem is, can't get Jenny Buyer fabric now. Um, here was Root and Fly. And Tonga Stonewash. So these were what I had looked for and found up until this point, just to give you some ideas. All right, now let's go back to show and tell. So now what I did is took all my show and tell folders and put them in one concise space. So it's very easy for me to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Polly, for some reason, I couldn't just move her folder over. It said I had it open somewhere, which I don't know what they meant by that, but I copied it and moved it over. All right. Um, this, oh. <laughs> Here are some pictures from me. I don't know why it went in the first place, but this was a picture of storm damage not too far from here. These I got from our local um, news affiliate. And this was a gas station that got hit by the tornado in Wilkesboro, North Wilkesboro, and what a mess. This was a twofer. Got the tree in the house. <laughs> oh, no. Poor people. Oh, that was the quilt. You can tell I got excited about that quilt, can't you? And, okay, this is, everybody got all excited about that dumb um, eclipse. Well, unless you were a little closer to the path, that's all we got. It just kind of got a little bit darker as if it were a cloudy day. That's all I got. I went out there. I had my hand sewing. I had a drink of water. I was all ready. And this is all I got. <laughs> okay, so it's just a wee bit darker. Big deal. So then what I did, I didn't get the glasses and I knew I wasn't going to look at it. What I did is started my camera and stuck it out, took a picture without looking at the camera, just kind of hoping I was in the right area. Well, I don't know. I don't really see much. So unfortunately, I was too far away. I even had my little plate you know, so I could hold up and see it. Never saw a thing. One of the problems was it got overcast right at the height of the time. Here's when it got overcast. We had a bunch of, um, we had a bunch of clouds. There I am sitting out waiting. Oh, the big moment. <laughs> Here is another picture. Whoops. No. Okay. Here is another picture of the gas station that was hit by the tornado. There's another one. So it, look, we were very, very lucky it didn't get us here. All right. I think that was it for me. So now let's go back. And Alexis. Oh, how exciting it's been to have her at our art shows on Thursday night. And she is just seems like she's doing so well. She made this and showed it to the actual artist, the man, the actor who put the voice to the character. And then she took and cut out his um, autograph and sewed it onto there. What a keepsake she'll have. And then here are these. And the, the person who voiced, I think it was that one, um, she got to see him in person too, but she's doing so well. We're so tickled for her. You know, it's nice when some, I know that anytime you have a channel like this, 
people come and go and it depends on, you know, whatever stage of life they have. If they move on to different things, whatever, I totally understand that. But when you can see somebody that pops back through, it's such a joy for me. Here is Miss Betty Meisner's um, watercolor wash quilt. I love it. So there she is just laying it out. And then... Here it is. Her, she put butterflies on it too. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, butterflies just make us happy. But I love all of her flowers. I love how she did a progression of colors. That's really nice. Really nice, Miss Batty. So thank you for sending us. And look at this. Look at this art quilt. Isn't that something? I love it. It's probably called migration. That is just wonderful. And I love it, the three different shades. I love the big stitch embellishment. Phenomenal, Miss Batty. I can't wait to see more by you, hon. That is wonderful. So thank you for sending those. Okay, Miss Bonnie. Oh my gosh, Miss Bonnie is going to get the Teacher's Pet Award for this week. Goodness gracious, has she been busy. Let me see if I can make this, enlarge this just a little. Please understand, this is very tiny. And uh, here is the, I guess is this the pattern and this is what she started from it. Isn't that amazing? Oh, fantastic. And I like it. She was talking about getting the edges of the fabrics. Oh, this is a picture that her wonderful friend, Shalom, um, sent to her. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Because um, Miss, huh, Miss Bonnie was real close to the, the path of that eclipse. And then here is wonderful red work that she's been doing. Oh, my gosh. I love that. And here was another picture her friend sent her of the eclipse. Then she did a block exchange. And the woman that she exchanged blocks with sent her two March blocks. Aren't they wonderful? And look how that she did. It's like a snowball block, but she did. She first made a half square triangle of two different fabrics. I think that's pretty cool. So that was wonderful. How nice to do a block exchange where both people actually send the stuff. That's wonderful. I love this is the cutest little dragon, Miss Bonnie. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. There is that red work. And I think she says it's three or three and a half inches square. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's gorgeous. And, oh, I got so jealous when she showed this. I said, oh, my gosh, I have got to get mine out and work on it some more. This is called the LaFleur Quilt. And you do nine patch blocks with two different fabrics. Then this is appliqued on top. And we have this pattern. If anyone would like to jump in and participate, we have the pattern. Just let me know. Whoops. I did not take my medicine today for my trimmer. So sorry. And this is going to be Goldie. This is one of her dragons that she's going to do in a golden floss. That's nice. And, oh, laughter. Isn't laughter the best? I just realized this little bird's hanging upside down. No wonder. That's so cute. Oh, and look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -mm -mm. And it, you know what I like about it? 
if I were doing this, I'd have fingerprints from eating something. I'd have, you know, it'd be crunched up. It would be askew. Look how perfect that is. Oh, Miss Bonnie wouldn't want me to be anywhere near her black work. Let me tell you. Okay, here we go. And make it bigger again. Come on. So here is, she put the tape measure, or I mean the ruler, to the work. Look at that. Two inches. Just that part. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, this is a cute dragon. I think this was the one that she did to kind of test and see how would it come out if I did this for the red work. So I've got three, three red works to do this week to catch up. All right. Now, oops, I didn't mean to come all the way back out that far. Now we're looking Miss Jody has been very busy. You know she's doing a beautiful block of the week quilt, this one, with all of these curves, and, oh, it's just beautiful. Her choice of colors is just magnificent. But look now how much she has done. And I think I have one more picture to show you, too, because now she has the center all complete. And then she is working on putting the half circles around the outside. This is a gorgeous piece of work. Yes, here are the log cabin blocks that finish out the center medallion. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, and here, here are her log cabin blocks made out of shirtings which are Miss Jody's favorite. She's a scrappy girl and she loves shirting. That is just gorgeous, Miss Jody. And the latest in her matinee monsters. How cool is this? I love this. I was too big of a chicken to ever see the movie. I've only seen a few brief scenes. All I have to do is hear that music and that's a, that scares me. But isn't this great? Jody is so talented. Isn't that wonderful? Gosh, I love that. Thank you, Miss Jody. You're doing some great work, hon. All right, next is Miss Mary. Miss Mary's been pretty busy, too. So she's been also working on the paper piece blocks, doing a beautiful job with them. And it's funny, mine's more intense. She has softened hers a little. She told us her husband's a carpenter and looked at the deck. I said, ah, now I get it. That is beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Then here is another one. This, hmm, was this the one that was 60 pieces or... I'm trying to think of which one was the one that was 68 pieces. No, I think this is a 60-piece one. I'm not sure. Okay. This is the 68-piece one. Goodness gracious. Love, love, love it. So thank you, Miss Mary. And as your flowers grow, I would love more pictures too. Okay, Patricia Fry. I just, I can't, I can't bear to delete this one. I'm going to be making a bunch of cupcakes for my wedding. So wouldn't that be cute? But I'm not promising anything, but I told Mark, trying to figure out what to do about a wedding cake. I thought, you know what? I think cupcakes is the way to go. That way, when everybody, anybody's hungry, just get one yourself and that's done. All right. My daughter actually going to help me because we need dairy-free also and also gluten-free. So, because my daughter has, granddaughter has celiac disease. So, Becky's going to take care of those two and I'm going to do the regular run-of-the-mill ones with very pretty colors, I hope. All right. So, look at this. Now, who... I forgot now. See, I was so busy talking, I forgot who. this. That's right. This is Patricia Fry's. And I think her blocks are wonderful. Love those colors, too. 
And here is something else she's working on. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Isn't that neat? And I love the directional stripes in it, too. Well, that's a lot of fun. It is so good, Miss Patricia, to see you quilting again. I know with health concerns and moving, it's been a little tricky for you. Now, you remember that when we started talking red work, Miss Polly said, I, I had some black work that I'm doing. Well, there it was. And if you're ready, here it is now. She finished it. Oh, my gosh. That is just beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. And I love it. It looks like it's a, um, a dark green, a muted green color. Very, very pretty. I, I've got to say, Miss Polly, you are very talented. So, I mean, she does so much with, you know, doing the red work, doing weaving, quilting. In fact, quilting, I think, is kind of new on the scene for her. Luckily, Miss Vicky, or otherwise known as Miss Joso, if I'm not mistaken, I, oh, I hope I'm not mistaken. Um, sometimes when I say things, I go, oh, please let that be right. But she wanted to look at this gorgeous stained glass quilt. She made it for her sister who lives in a house that used to be a church. Isn't that fascinating? But that is gorgeous. I just love it. And she made it bigger so it would fit her sister's, the bed for her sister. But how how sweet, thoughtful to make a stained glass quilt for the sister's house that formerly was a church. Because she has stained glass windows still in the church. So that's just beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. And then she made a quilt. I'm trying to remember, was this for a niece or somebody for college? I may have been a daughter or something, but she got that one done. And she made a rug to match. I love that. I have not yet made a fabric rug. I love those braided rugs. They, they, they were... Everyone used braided rugs in the 70s. I love that. But that's so pretty with the soft colors. Okay. Now, that was it. Now, see how much easier that was for me? I didn't have to search through thinking, oh, no, please don't let me miss somebody. I don't want to break their heart. So, okay. All right. Stop away a little bit, and I need to come back to y'all. I can't see y'all. Hey, oh, goodness, little, let's move that back just a little. <laughs> All right. Oh, so I think, I think we're done for today. So any questions that you might have, any, any thoughts? Does anyone want to comment on what they're thinking about the July quilt class? Anybody having thoughts on that? Wasn't that a fun show and tell? It was great. Y'all have done some beautiful work. Beautiful work. It keeps me inspired. It really does. And now that my taxes are done, I can go back to doing what I love best, quilting. So... I mean, when you love artistic things, something like quilting is a drag. <laughs> My brain doesn't think that way, people. It just doesn't. So, it's, ah, this, now, Joso said that the, or Vicky said that the stained glass quilt is a free pattern on Jordan fabrics. Oh, I love it when people share this. I love that. Yes, please. Say, thank you, Marsha. I'm going to give you my email. Our time to quilt at pwc.com. There. 
If you have pictures that you would like to share, let me put my glasses on, make sure I did it right. If you have pictures you'd like to share in our show and tell, please send them to me and um, let me know. You know, if you ever send me a picture but you don't want it on show and tell, just tell me because I'll easily respect that. But um, thank you for spending some time with me today. And maybe I'll go up and go put some spinach seeds in. I think I have a backyard bunny. It's not a pet. And I only see it once in a while. But last year, I put a little mesh fence around my little vegetable garden. And when my green beans were just setting and growing, and I kept checking them to see if they'd be ready, the little backyard bunny came in and ate them all. So I, I said, Mark, I think we're going to need to put some stiffer mesh um, within two feet of the ground and just in, into the ground because I could see where the bunny was pushing under the mesh fence. But I think I'm going to start out by putting spinach seeds in one of my giant pots because I would like to have some myself instead of feeding them all to the wildlife. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, you're very, very welcome. I think we've covered everything. I also went on the site and took out some shows that I'm not going to be able to do because of the wedding plans. So um, don't worry. It's just going to be a couple. But y'all are the best. You make me very, very happy. And uh, I think... That's a wrap, as they say. Do something special just for you. You can't take care of others until you've taken care of yourself. All right, everybody. As women, we give, always give more than we even have to give. So take good care of yourself and uh, have a great week. This week, I won't see you on Thursday. I'm going to take some much needed R&R and work out in the yard. And then I will be here next Sunday, okay? So I will see you next Sunday. Take good care, all of you. You are the best. You give me such joy. And keep me, you, you inspire me to create. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great, great week. <laughs>